One of the strangest trends of our modern consumer society is the reusable water bottle collectors. What was once a symbol of your eco-friendly lifestyle has now become a status symbol with people owning whole walls of these things to show off online. The largest and latest name to take over this scene is the Stanley Quencher. The Stanley Quencher has taken over the internet, with people literally scrambling to pick up limited edition versions of this bottle. But at the end of the day, it is basically just a giant sippy cup. So what the hell is going on? Okay, everybody, it is a new year, and current headlines throughout the world are just depressing, so we thought that in the spirit of unity, we'd do a project on something so universally beloved and incontestably well-marketed as to unite even the most divided blue and red states. No, we're not talking about Taylor Swift. We're talking about the Stanley Cup. No, not that Stanley Cup, the other one. Although it is important to note that you can get Stanley Quenchers emblazoned with Taylor Swift themed stickers and just about anything else that you might want. I mean, honestly, there's probably not a thing that you can't get on one of these things at this point. Jokes aside though, we are making this video because in some strange turn of events, this particular reusable water bottle trend has not died the predictable death that most trends do, in part due to one video. Everybody's so concerned about if the Stanley spills, but what about if it melts? It's in a fire yesterday, it still has ice in it. Now, an insanely viral video like this one can launch a brand, that is for sure. But the Stanley Cup mug tumbler thing is not a new thing. The brand is actually over 100 years old and has enjoyed a very loyal fan base for decades before they became the symbol of modern hydration. But we didn't actually leap to make this video right off the bat because in all honesty, we kinda already had made it. A few years ago, we made a video about the insane popularity of a water bottle that people were flocking to and collecting without any logical reason, and that one was about Hydro Flask. My initial reaction to this new trend was that it was the Hydro Flask story all over again just in a slightly different shape and I was partially right but then I saw this woman putting dog outfits baby snack trays and what can only be described as tactical gear on her adult sippy cup and I realized that this new bottle trend was overconsumption at a whole other level and so here we are making another video about water bottles oh, sh here we go again. Now to summarize the Hydro Flask video a little bit, reusable water bottles were at one point just a functional product that a lot of people used because they made sense. But because of the looming climate crisis and the hard work of commerce majors all over, buying a reusable water bottle became coded as a way for individuals to make a difference for the planet, but also virtual signal for their friends. Hydro Flask became the symbol of this part of the movement and it turned them into this niche trend that signifies to others that the owner had good values and was doing their part to save the world and they were very hydrated. But they didn't become a symbol by accident. These bottles were so big on purpose so that they couldn't fit in a backpack side pocket and the way that the handle was made meant that it had to be carried by hand. This combined with their bright colors and the trend of personalizing them meant that you wanted to show them off anyways. Seems pretty similar to the Stanley trend we have so far, right? The Hydro Flask era blew bottles out of control. Suddenly, bottles had hot and cold rankings that were being compared in YouTube videos. The colors of these bottles went crazy, and the marketing around them was super aspirational and focused on who you appeared to be when you carried one the lifestyle that you could lead if you just had that water bottle in your hand. Carrying a giant reusable bottle says, I'm healthy, I'm hydrated, and I probably just finished a 10K. And the bigger and more colorful the bottle was, the more obvious that statement was. But the reusable bottle scene took a real hit during the COVID years. Probably just due to the fear of contamination when used in the public sphere, this pushed people away from the trend and we really sort of thought that the movement was slowly just dying down after years of hype. But just when we thought that the movement was over, Stanley rises from the ashes to start it all over again, bigger than ever before. Stanley has achieved 
the online virality that only a very limited number of brands ever achieve. Pop stars and normies alike have been obsessed with these things for a while, apparently, but some more official sources are too, apparently. The Advertising Specialty Institute, which as a refresher is basically a bunch of nerds researching what kind of promotional swag gets big in their industry, has donned their special robes and convened in a gilded room to officially crown the Stanley Quencher the product of the year for 2023. This makes the quencher the symbol of what people are buying today. And so it gets a lot of attention and must be protected because the promotional products industry is apparently worth nearly $26 billion. The ASI doesn't just exist to reward a specific product. It also exists to reward marketing innovation, which is just what happened when Stanley seized a one of a kind opportunity. Okay, so we all saw the viral video where the woman Stanley Cup survives the fire that her Subaru didn't, right? That would have been a marketing blessing in and of its own, but Stanley made themselves holier than thou by buying her a new car and of course, publicizing the gift widely afterwards. Honestly, the cost of that Subaru is nothing compared to the millions of views that that video must have generated for them revenue-wise, but that's not really the point. See, this is a great story, but it's not actually that different from the Hydro Flask craze that happened just a few years earlier. The Stanley phenomenon is different in a few key ways. The Stanley Cup comes from a company that is 110 years old. This is like a real Americana legacy brand the Patriots have been drinking out of since the days when this country knew what freedom really was. Because a thermos bottle means more to you than a picnic. It's some kind of tough thermos bottle. To give you a bit of an idea of who was using these cups back in the day, our writer, Jordan's dad, used to bring his coffee to work in one of the classic green Stanley mugs that you can probably buy for way too much money for what it's actually worth today. And here's a picture of him, by the way, with a cougar kitten that he literally found at his job, apparently cutting down trees in the woods in the middle of nowhere Canada. So that's crazy. And this isn't just a random tangent because this is exactly the kind of woodsy, outdoorsy shit that this brand is known for. According to their own global president, the company was very okay with being quote, green, male, and hot. So how did the Stanley company pivot so drastically from green, male, and hot to, well, uh, white ladies drinking chilled beverages in an extremely unnecessary number of rotating and very colorful cups? Well, according to the New York Times, it all had to do with the power of a group of self-styled Utah mom influencers and the hold that they had over the women in the 20 to 50 category. See, I learned in the making of this video that the Stanley Quencher is not a new product. It was initially launched back in 2017. The bloggers behind the popular shopping recommendation site, The Buy Guide, got really into this thing, featuring it on their lists. Here's one of their posts from back then in 2017. I don't know if any of you remember those days. Probably not, because I don't even think they had Wi-Fi back then. But catastrophically in 2019, Stanley stopped listing the quencher on their sites in order to focus on other markets. Devastated, the makers of the buy guide had a spidey sense that if they could only persuade Stanley to relist it, they'd be able to sell the shit out of this slurpy sized drink. And this is apparently how it went down, according to the buy guide themselves. Basically, the women behind the blog had noticed that their loyal fan base really liked this particular drink cup. And so they reached out to Stanley repeatedly, but Stanley was, as we need to be reminded potentially, a 110 year old company that made giant green thermoses for woodsy dudes who domesticate pumas or whatever. The influencer ladies with great taste in bespoke recommendations for nice suburban moms were probably not too high on their radar, but they absolutely fucking should have been. Luckily for Stanley, these ladies were about to single-handedly transform their business model for them. The ladies loved The Bachelor, of course, and one of their favorite women from the show, Emily Maynard, had her first baby and they sent her a Stanley cup as a gift. The slurpy sized water bottle with the straw was perfect for a nursing mom because you can't be opening a lid 15 times a day when you got a baby in one arm. I know this now because my wife and I just had a kid like four months ago. Anyways, a lady who worked at Stanley was also a fan of The Bachelor, saw the post and immediately got into contact with the ladies at the buy guide. And there's proof, I guess, right there behind the song, right? 
who runs the world? Girls. Since then, Stanley debutted more colors and started actively marketing towards this demographic. According to their global president, they wanted to stay green, male, and hot, but also become more colorful, female, and cold. Just kind of a weird sentence. This has led to today where some women have collections of these cups. Uh, people are scrambling to get cups in special edition colors and stuff, and cups are going for as high as $500 on eBay. And this is peak consumerism. See, the Stanley brand in and of itself, and these mugs in particular, are designed to last like a lifetime. And these are the things that people are collecting. Of all of the dystopian consumer trends that we have today, like Timu and Shein and whatever the hell, at least these bottles were designed with a functional purpose. But like most collections of any kind, logic hardly factors into it at all. So why do people have dozens of a cup that is literally meant to be your only cup? As one very smart TikToker pointed out, the consumption patterns of the ultra-rich have their foundations ultimately in being psychologically insecure. Probably because their dad is some kind of insane billionaire who spends all of his time plotting how to die on Mars or whatever. But see, this rich person trend of slapping designer clothes over where your sense of self should be has trickled down to the middle class. But the middle class obviously can't afford to cycle through purses that cost as much as a family home. And look, I know that the internet has fractured our communities and created a loneliness epidemic that we are all still just barely trying to come to terms with. And maybe collecting bottles with your girlfriends is, is like the only thing you got left. But when we settle for an enormous water bottle larger than my newborn baby or whatever new trend happens to be coming down the line to put at the center of our lives instead of, I don't know, our own sense of self or or some kind of purpose, you really gotta ask yourself why you're doing it. And the truth is, it's hard. What we do know is that the brain releases a hormone, dopamine, whenever we make a purchase. But get this, the brain will give you even more dopamine if the outcome of that purchase is uncertain. So it makes a bit of sense that these collectors are losing their minds over whether or not they get a Slurpee cup size status symbol in a limited edition color. It's literally giving them a sort of gambler's high. When we did our video on Hydro Flask, we quoted an anthropologist who had been saying that people bought them because they signaled to others that they were outdoorsy and they were interested in saving the planet or whatever. Just go watch that video after this one, okay? And here's the Stanley version of that happening today. Many people are buying the Stanley and justifying it because they want to drink more water and these things being huge help with that. They happen to be exactly half of the recommended daily intake of water that you're supposed to drink. So if you drink two of them, you can technically meet all your hydration requirements. This does not in any way justify why you would need to buy 20 of them, but this is this kind of weird trickery that we can play with ourselves in order to justify something like this. But now listen, if you clicked on this video because you just want to know whether or not you should buy this water bottle, you got to take an honest look at yourself in the eye and ask yourself, do you need a water bottle that could shelter a small cat? Do you need something that is technically bomb and car fire proof? Do you need to be the most hydrated that you can possibly be? Well, if you said yes to all of those things, then honestly, Stanley's a really solid brand. They seem to have really solid quality stuff and they have for a really long time. The stainless seal on these burrito sized beverage holders is 99% recycled, it's BPA free, it fits in a cup holder and the lid rotates in a, in a pretty interesting way. But you could also go on Facebook Marketplace and find something used or use the water bottle you have or drink out of a cup like a human being. But listen, no matter how you are hydrating yourself today, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. And if you wanna see more of them, remember you can subscribe and you can like this video and we'll see you every single week for more content.